This video is not sponsored by Zevia Zero Calorie Energy. However, I am madly in love with Zevia, so if you want to sponsor this channel, I will pay you to do it. Mmm, tastes like pure energy. All right, so this video, we're gonna talk about private keys, seed phrases, and key store files. Pretty much a bunch of different ways to protect your cryptocurrency. These are basically your key to ownership. If you lose these things or screw it up, then you lose your cryptocurrency. There's nobody you can call and just be like, yo, what's up, I forgot my password. You lose it, so make sure you don't screw it up, and I'm gonna teach you how to do it right. <laughs> All right, so let's just talk about each one of these and what they are, you know, like, let's just back up. What even are these things? So the very first one is the private key, and it's basically a long string that is used to prove that you own Bitcoin or another cryptocurrency. Now, when I very first started with cryptocurrency, everyone said that you will get a private key and you don't wanna share with anyone, right? Because it's private, that makes sense. But I went on my wallet app and they did not ha have the private key button anywhere. How did I figure out what my actual private key was? There was no button to find this. They said everything was local and I managed it all, I owned it, but I couldn't find that option. And this was actually a common thing. I tried a couple of other apps. Nothing was showing me the private key. So if the private key is mine and I don't just wanna leave it in the hands of someone else, why is it not available on all of these apps? Well, I figured it out is because some of these apps use a different thing besides the private key known as a seed phrase. Now this is typically 12 random words and the seed phrase is actually used to make your private key. So your private key is derived from the seed phrase. So that is how it works as your private key. It's just easier to remember and it can be a little bit more useful. So that's my problem. All I found was a seed phrase on these apps. I didn't see anything about a private key. Now the third form of security when working with wallets is a key store file. Now this one, it's pretty much just literally a computer file that stores your key. So your private key is going to be inside of this file. And the way you can access this file is with a passphrase or just a password. So you need the password and you need the key store file to access your funds. This one I actually have the least experience with. I've worked with a key store file like once, but all of the wallets I'm most comfortable with use a seed phrase. And some of the other wallets I use just use a private key. Now just using a private key, this has one potential issue and it's actually kind of a big issue. A lot of people don't know this, but you're actually not supposed to reuse private keys. They are a one-time thing. What? What are you talking about, Caleb? You don't know what you're talking about. Well, let me explain. A private key, here, here's basically how everything is made, right? So you have your private key. I'm gonna get rid of this stuff. With cryptography, this is used to create your public key, which ultimately can create your address. So this is the thing people use to send you money. So, you know, each and every person uses this address and you ultimately get those funds in your wallet. But see how I wrote three arrows here? That's actually not supposed to happen. You should only ever use an address once and the private key and the address have a one-to-one -one connection. There's one private key for one address. So there is security and privacy concerns of address reuse, which you can research all day if you're interested, but there are a few main things. First, if you're reusing an address, it's a lot easier to associate that address with you or a particular entity that you're working with. So it makes funds easier to track and can ultimately lead to privacy concerns down the road. You know, if someone buys illegal drugs or does something with Bitcoin that they should not, and there's a, basically a paper trail that leads back to you, right? So that is more likely to happen if you're reusing addresses. Now, don't tell anyone, but some people break the rules here, right? I actually break the rules here because a common thing to do is to basically create a tip jar, right? 
So if you want to make a way that people can send you money and you can just share out the address, this is very, very common on the internet. So I have an address that I allow people to reuse and send me funds and I can put that address out on my social media, out in my descriptions, whatever. Is it the end of the world? No, not really. But let's say in there I had 100,000 Bitcoin. I know, it's like practically nothing. But if someone saw that, they might be like, hmm, this guy's got some cash. Like we should like mug him, you know? So it might put um, some uh, social pressure on me. I was intrigued by this, so I started looking for addresses with just a crap ton of Bitcoin, and I ended up finding some. On top of that, these addresses were already associated with a particular individual. So I knew this person has like almost a million dollars of Bitcoin just sitting in his wallet. So that is just one of the issues with address reuse. The Bitcoin Wiki also goes into a little bit more Imagine you get paid by three people for a service, you know, like maybe you have a gym membership, like where people pay you to work out at your gym, or you know, you're a personal trainer or something, and these people all pay you 80 bucks. And you know, this person figures out that you're reusing this address. So he finds out that this person already paid 80 bucks, so he's just like, yo, I already paid my 80 bucks. Look, there's the, the transaction history. And that can be seen on the public blockchain, but it's not easy to see who actually sent that money because it's not associated with names, it's just addresses. So it can bring up issues there as well. So ultimately, because you're not supposed to reuse addresses and there's a one-to-one -one connection between the private key and the address, you don't want to just have one private key. Now, the, the actual technical issue is that anytime you spend money from your wallet, your public key is exposed, which is one layer less secure than people just knowing your address. It's one layer closer to people figuring out your private key. Anyways, that's enough on that. I'm literally dying of boredom. Where does this issue come up? The biggest example I can think of is paper wallets. So a paper wallet, you might have a piece of paper or just for fun, you might have like a metal coin that looks like a Bitcoin. And on the back, you might have the private key. And using this as a store of money, you know, you're sending money to this wallet, that's not so bad. So if you're using this as a piggy bank and you're just sending money to this, it's not the end of the world. However, you probably don't wanna use it for day-to-day -day transactions. So that's one of the issues with paper wallets. Whenever you have a paper wallet, you should consider it a, a one-way destination. You send money to it, money doesn't come back out of that until you're done with it. All right, so how do we fix this issue? We're not supposed to reuse private keys. Well, what if for a wallet, instead of just giving one private key, we actually gave a bunch of private keys? You know, maybe we gave them 100 private keys and maybe we just kept adding private keys. The Options are unlimited, essentially, but this whole concept can be wrapped up in a, a new way of protecting our cryptocurrencies, and that is with a seed phrase. So a seed phrase, think about the words literally, it's like a seed to grow private keys. So we can come up with numerous private keys from one seed phrase. And if you're using like a mobile wallet, more than likely the mobile wallet's gonna have a seed phrase and anytime you send money or receive money, the address is going to update to a new address and it's all coming from this seed phrase. So your seed phrase doesn't just generate one private key, but it basically gives you access to all of the private keys. So that is a seed phrase, pretty dang cool. Here's what a seed phrase might look like. How do you spell pineapple? Jeez. Oh, but I had an accident there. Pine apple. All right, you guys aren't paying me to be smart. I don't know why I decided to write this out. And the words are gonna be more random, but I just decided to put my favorite foods up here. So we're gonna have 12 words and you will need to memorize these. And hey, man, I got a lesson for you guys. I actually screwed up big time because here I am on YouTube 
preaching like make sure you back up your stuff and memorize your private keys or whatever and I wasn't really like following my own advice because I had a mobile wallet and I did not back up my private keys. So one day I got kicked out of this wallet for some reason and I was like, all right, enter your seed phrase. I didn't know it. So I got kicked out of my wallet. Yeah, so that is how I lost 200,000 Bitcoin. No, I'm just kidding. I had about like $100 in there and I was able to get access to the wallet because I was still in the wallet on an old mobile device. So I turned my old mobile device on, went in there, got the seed phrase, and got back in on my new mobile device. So I uh, was able to save the day. I felt really good about myself because I didn't lose my funds. So the only one I didn't really talk about a whole lot was the key store file. And I was doing a lot of research how this works and just really learning it. But then I was like, oh wait, I don't care. So if you wanna know more, there's a really good article. It's called, What is an Ethereum Key Store File? by Julian M on medium.com. It's a really good picture-driven article. So check that out if you wanna know more.